It's time for Living Your Purpose, a motivational and inspirational podcast with Peter and Joyce Nielsen. Hey everybody, it's Peter Nielsen with Living Your Purpose podcast. I hope everyone is enjoying this day. And uh, for all of you, whether you're from the West Coast to East Coast, if maybe you're a first time watcher on YouTube um, or Spotify, um, SoundCloud, or iTunes, if you like the content, just click the link below. You know, over the years, I've interviewed so many different people, and today we have a, a great guest, and he's got an amazing testimony. I always say we all have stories, and for many of us, those stories turn into testimonies um, with victory, with breakthrough. And uh, our next gentleman, if, if this doesn't motivate you, I don't think anything will. Uh, he was just in a really, really bad, dangerous uh, bike gang, motorcycle bike gang. Um, his name is Scott Taylor. He's from Oklahoma, and uh, he's 51 years old. And he truly has an amazing testimony on how with purpose, finding your purpose, um, believing again, your faith on how you can turn your life around. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Scott. I am super excited. I have Scott Taylor here from Oklahoma. And Scott, you know, I was just mentioning on how we all have stories. We, we all have stories. And if we get out of our own way, they turn into amazing testimonies. And at our last convention, I had this opportunity and blessing to meet you. You you just pierced my heart with just your passion, your purpose. But, you know, when you told me that you were in this, excuse my expression, this badass, dark kind of motorcycle gang, um, and then on how in my opinion, with our creator, how it just transformed your life. Um, there's a lot of people out there that are broken. There's a lot of people that that truly need direction and motivation. There's people probably that are listening, I believe, or watching, and there's no coincidences. Everything happens for a reason. And I believe that maybe they need to hear your story, your testimony, your hope. So, you know, why don't you just walk us through on how you got into this dangerous part of your life, this kind of dark chapter that truly, with God's help, helped transform you to the man you are today. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, yeah, I grew up in a small town here in Oklahoma. Um had great parents, you know, I was actually brought up in church and then I uh, got married, opened the gym up. I um, had the gym. It was going great. I went through a bad divorce and going through the bad divorce. I just kind of lost my way. Uh, of course, I started hanging out at bars and doing things that I'm not so proud of today, but that's that's part of it. You know, I, I was broken, as you said, broken people. And uh, I did have three beautiful kids out of that situation. Um, but during that, in the bar situation, well, I found myself, uh, I guess, looking to fill a void, per yep. se. I would say that was a, a good thing to, not a good way, but I was looking to fill something that was going on in my life and the brokenness. And didn't realize that at the time. I didn't realize I was that broken. Just mad at the world. Um, mad at the judicial systems and and uh the outcomes of things for my children and and of course i found myself hanging out at bars and all the wrong places and i, I came across a motorcycle club and um i would have never thought that myself that i would be going down that path but i found some brotherhood in that and uh started filling my life with that all all the time. I mean that's that's what I that's where I went. Now you moved though from Oklahoma and you literally drove to the other side of the country to right. be part of this. You know, and if I could just yeah. contribute just for a minute and then I want you to pick it up, but it reminds me 
when I was young and I was very sick with Crohn's disease, fear channeled wrong turns into anger. So my dad became like this raging alcoholic because they couldn't fix me. I was I was born with an incurable condition and they were watching me die at 15. So long story short, I felt I had a huge void as well. And I got into, you know, at 17, I got into a, a gang in Brooklyn, New York. And, you know, they used to, I'm embarrassed to say it, you know, but that was the old Peter and the new creation in Christ is different. But they used to call me, right. they used to call me Peter Brass Knuckles Nielsen because I would never leave home without it. And I it used to, my adrenaline, and I love to fight. And so uh, many people don't understand that. But when you just said what you said, and I want you to continue the story, I wasn't getting the love and the support from my own father. And I, 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 tell, my, I tell myself this, if I don't give my two daughters the attention they need, they're going to find that attention somewhere else. You know, so it goes full spectrum. So here you are, you're moving, you had this bad divorce, you feel like you have this void. So you go out to California and you do feel some camaraderie because, you know, let's just be honest, brokenness attracts brokenness, <laughs> you know, right. and you're two peas in a pod. So what ended up happening and how long did you stay in that, you know, that situation? Uh, I was all together. I was in there about six years. I, I was in California. I moved out there. I just, I just literally climbed on the bike one night and took off. Um, and, and I was out there for about a year and a half, two years. Um, and of course that was just adding fuel on the fire going there. Uh, nothing slows down in California. So there's no, there's no shut off, you know? And, uh, and so definitely was really broken during that time. Didn't realize it again. I'm still not realizing that I'm so broken. I just was angry. Right. Um, and, Did you see uh, your kids and stay in contact or no? Couldn't control that situation. Yep. I, I did. I did see them. I would come back and, and uh, I mean, honestly, I think the only piece what I found was when I would climb on my bike and I would ride back and forth. During that time, there was some peace that I found on the motorcycle, right. seeing nature and stuff, not realizing that that was God. I don't think at the time that he was talking to me, but I didn't Amen. realize it. Amen. And um, so, so coming back and forth, I would do that. I would see my kids. And then one time I was in visiting, uh, and this is the big pivotal moment of my life that changed everything was when, and, and I'll try to get through this without getting upset, but my my uh, my daughter, I want to say she was 12 years old. I was visiting with them, fixing to go back to California. And man, it I was there seeing her, telling her bye. She was literally holding on to my leg and begging me to stay. And uh, I just, I don't know. I was trying to be hard, you know, and I was hardened at that time. I, I, I loved my kids, but there was a whole lot of life that I was super hard about. Um, just super broken, I guess you would say, in a really, really dark spot. But I do remember that moment with my daughter. And I told her, I got to go. I got to go. And she's just bawling, you know, begging for her dad. And here I was leaving to go back, you know, to what I thought was life at the time. And and um, uh, <laughs> she, um, I got in the car, I'm driving down the driveway and it just hit me like, what am I doing? What am I, my, my daughter that needs me is begging for me and here I am leaving her. And um, <laughs> Isn't it amazing so I, I hit reverse God. on the car. Continue. Yeah, I hit reverse in my car. I hit reverse in the car. I went back to her, and I told her, I said, you know, I said, I'll be back in two months. When I come back, I'll never go back again. But I knew I had to go kind of address some things and uh, yeah. um, make that right. 
And uh, it was all about my kids. You know, at that point, I, I knew right then that I'm done. I'm done. I need to change. I at least need to be here for my kids. I didn't realize all the change that was going to happen and, and how God was going to basically ambush me at the time. And and he wasn't right then. It took some time. But well, Don't you think that he used your daughter to speak life into you? Oh, absolutely. I, I tell her all the time, she's my saving angel. I mean, to this day, she's my saving angel. She really was. God so, will use, absolutely. Yeah, God um, will use anybody or anything to get a message to a person in need. So so here you are, you, you know that you're going to make another transition. How do you tell, and again, you know, I don't know because I haven't been in that kind of a group, but sometimes that doesn't go well, meaning sometimes you have this brotherhood, you make this promise, you're in there for a long time. Like how does, I mean, God had to give you grace in that conversation too, because that's not an easy task. Yeah, no, it wasn't. And at the time, you know, I, I, I was, Definitely a, a, what I considered a man's man, though. I knew that I needed to go address that in the right way. Yes. Um, and, and I did. I did go out there and I asked to speak with the brothers. And, uh, you know, I, I still have I still to this day have some real care for some guys out there. Yep. And there's some good people. There is everybody has some humanality inside of them, you know, yep. and, and that's what people don't realize. And um, but some of the older brothers. um they were like, man, if there's one thing that I could have back would be my family and to be with my kids. You know, some people, some of them don't have that opportunity anymore. And and, uh, you know, that was encouraging. I was I was real proud to hear that because I wasn't I wasn't know I wasn't sure how that was all going to go. But that was 100 percent why I wanted to be back here. It was just my kids. You know, I need to be with them. And uh, I actually got encouragement to do that. Um, so that was that went a lot better than I thought it was going to. <laughs> so how did, when did your faith journey click in again? Because we all go through hills and valleys and detours and bumps with our belief system. So here, you're, you know, within two months, you're coming back. Like, what was that relationship with you and God like? What was that conversation like? <laughs> uh, well, to be honest, there wasn't a conversation with him at that point in my life. There was, I mean, uh, you know, I see now with God being in my life that the devil tries to chase you. At that time, the devil did not have to chase me. He knew I was waking up on his side every day, unfortunately. Wow. I mean, you know, I hate to say that, but, it's powerful. you know, my, 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 my mind was so broken and twisted up and and angry still um i still didn't have that i wasn't thinking that way when i when i come back i was just thinking about need my my kids need me you know so that's where i was at now once i got back here then uh i was going to get my kids one weekend and uh and you know my daughter said go to church with me dad and i was like Oh, I don't, I don't think that's a place for me to go. You know, I, I, I was like, there's no way, you know, a lot of these people knew me for, as a kid growing up in church. And so they, this is a small area. Everybody knows you. But they also know where you've been and what you've been doing. And, and, uh, whether we like it or not, people are judgmental. And, right. uh, at that point in time, I didn't need somebody to try to tell me anything. Cause I probably would not have taken that very lightly and I would have addressed it in a, in a completely ill matter. I'm sure. <laughs> so, um, but, but I told her, I said, well, you, you go to church, you know, she's like, Oh no, I know you, you always made sure that we went to church with Nana and Papa wow. because, you know, I, I said, well, I wanted y'all to do good. And she said, but dad, I want you to do good. <laughs> wow. You talk about, Talk about powerful and pierce your heart. That was uh that was that was a moment, another pivotal moment that my you know, my 12-year-old daughter 
speaking life into me as a kid. And I'm supposed to be the one taking care of her, but here she, she was, was. She was being <laughs> used as a, a guardian angel to you. And it's so beautiful that you can recognize that and give that validity. And the relationship you have with her has got to be amazing. Oh, it is. I got three beautiful kids and, and, uh, and then I have two step kids and, and my relationship with all of them are really good, you know, but um, I mean, I got a, my oldest son, he's a, he's a game warden now, which is great. My, my daughter, she lives in Colorado and she's uh, helps with her and her husband. Now they have an F45 studio wow. that they run. She's pregnant. I mean, it's my first grandkid. <laughs> I got to ask you a question. When was that pivotal moment there was that moment with your daughter that was life changing. And then it's so funny. I wrote a post, I think it was on social media. And I was like, if you're full of yourself, you got no room for God, you know? <laughs> and right. my point is, is that you were, it's beautiful on how God works. It's like, sometimes he cuts you. You don't even know you're bleeding. So it's like, you're going back thinking, okay, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to man up. I'm going to be the dad that she needs. But God was already working behind the scenes. And he was just waiting for bated breath for you to just ask for help or direction. It, was there a pivotal moment where it was a yaha moment that you had with God, like saying, wow, I have an opportunity on changing my life around and, and you love me. God, you love me. You, you've, you've taken me out of the ashes. Like, was there that moment? Oh, yeah, there was. When I went to church with her, I'm sitting in the church building and, and I remember going there thinking, I don't care what anybody says, you know, let, let somebody say something to me, <laughs> you know, but I'm here for my daughter and, and, um, and I'm sitting there and I'm not even expecting it. And next thing I know, Peter, I had, I had tears just running down my face, uncontrollable. And, and I remember getting up and going to the bathroom to, because I was somewhat embarrassed and then thinking also what's wrong. What's, what's this, I'm letting this weakness, this is, this is going to make me weak. You know, and how crazy is that now? But I watch the, the enemy time, speaking again, right? Yeah, again, he's after me, and I'm like, I'm not gonna, I, I won't, I won't come back because I'm not gonna change who I am. I'm not gonna be a weak man. I got to be a strong man. Little did I know that that God was. I mean, being a Christian is one of the strongest things I believe you can do. Uh, also, one of the hardest things you can do, but the most precious thing that there is out there. But Went back to the church with her again, and that just started building, you know. And and then I remember, I, I remember begging God to show me how to love again. Wow. You know, wow. I had lost, I had lost a lot of time with my kids, lost a lot of time with my whole, with my family, with friends, and um, I didn't know how to love at that time. I was pretty hardened. I was really hardened, and then. Uh, you know, I just kept kept praying to God. I learned how to pray again. It's been a while, <laughs> so I learned to pray and and uh, started a little bit of let letting that pride down and letting God in and not even trying to still. I don't believe I was still trying to completely. I didn't want Him to control everything. I still wanted to be in control. You know, <laughs> that's that alpha and, male. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then. Um, Years later, I met my wife that I have now, and uh, you know we, we built a relationship going to church. And she came from really uh, tremendously broken home. I mean, like I had a good upbringing. I was born into a good home, made bad choices. Big difference. I don't feel like that she was born into a good home. She was born into brokenness. Big, big difference, but she's got a great heart, you know, and uh, one person in her life made a big difference for her, too, and that was her grandmother, and that just goes to show you how one person, I mean, my wife has a beautiful heart, but um, 
but she wasn't brought up in church at all. So for us to build a relationship in church is, is pretty unique too, wow. being that she wasn't from that. And uh, we built our relationship in church. Again, my daughter invites us to go to a, a, a life church and we went and my wife's like, I wonder if there's anything like that. I just, she was just bawling at church that day herself. She's like, that was amazing. You know, and the next thing we know, we find one. It was a, at the time was just, um, oh, it, it wasn't a life church. It was like, I forget what they call it. Just, um, they were, they were based off of the life church, you know, but our campus pastor there ended up, it became a full blown life church. Uh, it grew so much. He married us. Uh, I say he married us and he kept us married, but he says God <laughs> kept us married. So. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, I see I see you guys. Um, I see pictures and videos of you guys working out together. And the both of you, one of the biggest gifts we could have, as you said you were praying to God for, is to love and to be loved. And when I, one of the biggest things on why I wanted to uh, have you on as a guest on my show is that so many people out there, they get desensitized, they get jaded, they get cold. They may have a lot of money, they may have a successful career, they may live in a big house, but they're empty, they're bankrupt when it comes to love. And I believe that God is going to put judgment on all of us by really just one thing, on how we love his people. <laughs> True. And, True. You know, and it's funny, biblically, everybody is really good at saying this first sentence, you know, love thy neighbor, but they don't say the second sentence. <laughs> <laughs> love thy enemy too <laughs> yeah, that's right yeah. and, that's, and that's a hard one it is it's a hard one and it's it a is. lifetime journey you know so yeah. so i guess my question to you what a beautiful what a beautiful sequence of events and just a beautiful transformation in your life i love the word transformation and i've mentioned this to you a couple of times and to my listeners and viewers, the word transformation in the dictionary says making a radical change in some area of your life. And mm -hmm. to see and to hear where you've been, where you've even started. And then I love when you said you went into the church and you were like, are you kidding me? I, I shouldn't even be in this building. And that's where the enemy, that's one of the biggest lies of the enemy. Because so many people that I've talked to, like me when I was growing up, was bad to the core. <clears throat> I mean, a train wreck. And I've had a person say to me, are you kidding me, Peter? If I walk into a church, the walls are going to collapse. The church <laughs> is going to fall down on me. There's no way. And the beautiful thing is if you really think about it, King David, he was an adulterer. He was a murderer. Samson, I mean, I could go on and on and on. Moses, they were all in perfect times 10. And yet, King David, who was the adulterer, who was kind of a narcissist, who, who ended up murdering the husband of the person he, he basically wanted as his wife, at the end of his life, after him getting himself right with God's mercy, grace, and favor, God writes, he's a man of my own heart. Right. Because he was remorseful. He wanted to do the right thing. He just needed guidance and protection. And he held on to, you know, to God you know, in a, in a just, you know, in a thought process, every step he was just wanting to know at the end of his life, I want to please you. I want to put you first, you know, and God will always answer prayers when God knows your true heart. 
Only he knows your true heart. So for all the people that are watching and that are listening and who has terrible addictions and who has got a, you know, $300,000 job, they're, they're walking around in $4,000 suits, but yet they're going to their to the city to get little bags of heroin because that's their that's their stronghold. Or for people that are looking to possibly just check out, maybe just think that the grass is greener on the other side. They're gonna just bolt, leave their kids, and just leave their 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 wife and just leave. For the people that truly are so lost. What would or what can you say to them? What message can you transcend to them right now after everything you've been through? It's not like you think you know, you know what you know what you know because you've you've lived it. Mm -hmm. I think, Peter, that now I know that God equipped me in those dark places. He equipped me, even though I did not realize it, he equipped me to be able to be a strong person because now I realize most of my true growth and even today came in the darkest valleys. Yep. yep. It really did. I, I didn't realize it. And that, at that time, it's just all mingled up and, and you're just surrounded by badness, you feel like. But... I also will find myself, especially when I was trying to trans, you know, just basically become a, a new person, a new person with God during that time. Well, then you're you're giving some things to him and then you see the growth and then you fall back a little bit. But it doesn't matter what it is. Like you said, addictions of, of whatever. I mean, it can be right. drugs. Uh, I was addicted to the lifestyle. Right. You know, that's what I was. Excuse me, money, sex, anything. Back. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. So, anything. Yeah. I yeah. Always yeah. Say, anything. And so I believe that you can just don't, it doesn't matter what age you are. It's never done. Never too it's late. It's never done. You can change, you can change that at any point in time. Um, after I started letting God in, just the, the number of relationships, just, just like yourself, when I came across you, I believe that God has his hand in, in this business that I'm going into completely. I, agree. I believe that he's completely got his hand in this. I wouldn't be where I'm at. I wouldn't have came across you, but he, he don't he don't waste anything. He don't waste you know what's anything. beautiful? I love what you just said. God doesn't, there's nothing wasted in God's economy. And failure doesn't need to be final. And then also what you right. said is all the growth that I've ever had is in the valley, not on the mountaintops. Yeah, I made the trophies behind me, the Mr. Universe, Mr. America, Mr. World. Everybody sees me raising the trophy, but they don't see the years of sweat equity, of tears, of, right. of failures, of hurts. That was the valley. And I agree with you a million percent. Some of the most successful people that I've ever met in life have learned the most valuable lessons in the darkest desert of a valley that they were in the middle of the ocean, they couldn't see land. And yet, with his favor, with that perseverance, when you get out of that storm and you finally look back, you know the lessons that will be with you forever. And then, you know, you can pay it forward. And it kind of goes to my one of my last questions to you. Why don't you tell everybody? <laughs> it's so ironic. Like, Obviously, your picture of health. I mean, I see muscles on top of muscles. And, you know, you and I, we have so much in common where we love fitness and you you have a fitness business and a gym and you got and you and your wife, you work out together. But why don't you tell, you know, just a little story on here you were bad to the core and then you got into law enforcement and <laughs> different stuff that just you can't. Make this stuff up. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> it's it's definitely ironic. So that that's part of it, you know, is um I seen I seen a lot of just the country seemed like it was in a mess. I had changed where I was in such a good spot. And so I, another door that got open that I wasn't expecting, you know, I, I never would have thought that. And, and here he was, he just, I, I love to work out. I love to shoot and train and, and do all that. And I've got some buddies that I've come across and, and I'm very, I always want to be transparent of letting them know kind of my past that way nobody's misguided. Yep. Uh, not that I'm proud of it, but you know, just to be up front and, uh, Man, because of God's grace and the people that I've came across, all these men have been godly men and they don't judge and, and they realize that, hey, you know, there might be a little standoff and eh, we're going to watch this guy a little bit, you know, and I get that. I do. But once they seen I'm I'm not out even. In, uh, so I went in law enforcement, you know, uh, who, how ironic is that? But, um, you know, I, I seen a, a purpose in that to be able to I've walked obviously the other side of the life. Right. Um, so your perspective is so different in a good very way. Different. Yeah, very different. And so when I come across somebody doing something, I realize I don't know why they're where they're at right now. I don't know what's going on in their life or what happened in their life to be where they're at, but I know where they can go. Right. You know, I know where they can go. We just got to change a lot of things sometimes. Right. Sometimes it's a lot of things. That you right. Their mindset, their the heart. Mindset. Yeah. The mindset is, is is a big key. And again, like you said, the heart, that void that, that I was chasing for so long, trying to fill with all the wrong things. I believe God gives us that void to fill with him. Amen. And I didn't realize that. But once I find it, started putting that void in there, of God, let him in my heart. I believe that's a given thing. I believe he gives us this void. And then we just got to, he gives us all. He obviously, he gives us the, you know, he lets us make our own decisions. We have this little thing but called free will. <laughs> free will. And, and, you know, sometimes we're completely flesh and we make really bad decisions that free will, but, that's where the faith comes in with him. And once you realize and you let that pride down, especially being men, we're prideful, you know, uh, I had a preacher even tell me that one time, what are you taught as a young man in football and stuff like that? Pride, 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 pride. And basically Jesus, you don't teach pride. He teaches right. love. Humility. So, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's where I was at when I got in law enforcement. I was, I was, I'm very humble. I'm still, still humble today, you know, and um, and then, you know, to be able to help people, that's the thing. That's what I love. Um, I want to help people. You know, it's just like when they come to the gym and I see them and they come in and none of us started. I didn't I didn't know what I was doing. When I started in the gym. I was all over the place, you know, but I see them come in once they make that foot thrust through the door and they're wanting to change. God, I want to do everything I can to help them change because. I know that can be life changing, you know, exactly it's positive. You, you positive know, God will always connect the dots. If we get out of our own way, he has the people, the resources, the places. And sometimes the obvious isn't obvious to people because their heads are in their butt and, and they don't see it. Right. Um, the, yeah. I, I'm sure that there, I would be um, not obedient to our creator if I didn't give people the opportunity to reach you, how can people reach you? I'm sure a lot of people could relate to your story and to you. How can people reach you to maybe ask for help or maybe ask for guidance or just have a question? Do you have a, a website, an email, anything? Uh, I have an email and I'm, I mean, I have a lot of people on Facebook, Instagram, you know, I, I do yeah. have that. And I have had a few people reach out over time. I ha actually have, and that's great. Um, but uh, I can give them a, my email would yeah. be fine. And, yeah. Email uh, and so, Facebook. That would be awesome if you could do that. Yeah. So on Facebook, it's under Clifton Scott Taylor. Um, that's my full name and I go by Scott, but, and then my email is real deal. 
bullies at gmail.com. And uh, I used to sell bull. I used to sell bully dogs back in the day, so that's well, always been there. And I just bought my wife um, a French bully um, that's five months. Okay. And his name is Bentley, and he. I'm in love with this dog. I mean, it's like it, behind me you can see behind me you can see a, a partial black thing right there. That's my 200 pound Samson um, who's sleeping here, and he's like my shadow. And then I got this little guy, but right. they love each other. It's crazy. My last question yeah, to you. Yeah, so always, yeah. What's that? I, I, I always want to clarify the real deal bullies because, yep. because of my past. I'm not thinking <laughs> right. of bully. You know, I don't think that. So, so that's where it came from. <laughs> you know, I want to leave with this question. And um, how do you want to be remembered? What what do you want people that meet you one time or know you? How do you want to be remembered? What what kind of legacy, if any, do you want to leave behind? Just a guy that cares. A guy that cares about people and they're changing their life. I mean, I, there's nothing better than changing because I know what it feels like to change your life. And so to me, that's, I think that's one of the reasons like the gym just resonates so much with me because I see life changes in there and, and, and it, and it continues on with their kids and their kids, especially with our health world where it's at today. And, but uh, I just care about people and, and that's, that's a God given, you know, I mean, he, he taught, me how to, taught me how to love again. And, and man, I wake up, Peter, I wake up. I love waking up early in the morning and hitting the gym. We get up, I get up at five o'clock every morning and, and I hit the gym first thing in the morning to get that positive going. That's some of the things that for me that I did was just started plugging in positive all the time, positive motivational videos, finding people like yourself that's out there that help people help inspire people. Yeah. And I just, I encourage people to do that all the time, but that's, that would be the thing I would say just, he was a great guy that cared about people. Hey, Amen. And I, I will I will say I, I just want God to continue to use you in a mighty way. Um, some of the most wonderful friends and people that I meet have not lived a perfect life because I can't even relate to a perfect life because of my childhood and the abuse um, that my father gave to all of us and two death experiences with Crohn's disease. But I just want to thank you for taking the time. And um, I could just tell as I got to know you that God is going to use you to pay it forward because your story has become a powerful testimony. And what I like also is for all the listeners and the viewers, if you want to get any information, you know, I have the TV show Peter's Principles. It's on the Astound TV Network. Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And then we're worldwide in 110 countries. Uh, Peter's Principles is found on DBTV, on Roku, every Saturday and Sunday at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. And if you want to drop us um, a question or you want to be on a guest or have an idea, just go to Peter at PeterNielsen.com. Again, thank you, Scott. We love you. I love your heart. Thank you. I will, I will see you soon. And to everyone, make yeah, sure you. that you get off of the sidelines, get back in the game, because I named this podcast Living Your Purpose. We were born on Very purpose cool. to live a purposeful life, and that's what I want for all of you. So again, Scott, thank you, and see everybody thank you, next, brother. next week. Bye. All right. Thanks. Have a great day.